just going back to when when I first met you actually, um, when because you were. Did, did you come out of, were you a plumber by trade? I was a plumber by trade, but yeah. when I met you, uh, I was working for Fletcher Construction yeah. on site. Mm. Um, out at Stonefields there. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And I was just doing really just entry level foreman stuff. I mm. had done um, uh, part of a cadetship with them doing quantity surveying and did a diploma in quantity surveying as well after mm. my plumbing. But I just didn't want to be in front of a computer all the time. So mm. I just asked, hey, can I go? I'll finish the diploma off, but can I go outside and sort of learn a bit about construction management maybe? Mm. Um, and that's when I met you because mm. you were coming in and starting to deal with um, Saltus and yep. yeah, a little bit of a handover, yeah, 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 yeah that defecting, yeah. that handover. Yeah, but then I remember like um, you, you wanted to have a chat about building management because you thought, oh, let's get into building management. Yeah, that's I'm, right. You're glad you didn't now. I think, yeah, and you sort of could tell me that it is, that's a, it's a needy business, eh? Mm. Like, you uh, got to be available for those people all the time. Yeah. Uh, but it allowed me to, the guidance you gave me, allowed me to take a step away from being employed, mm. or that just that cycle, mm. um, to go into trying to be self employed or get mm. into a business, be that way inclined. That's cool. Yeah, and that's what you gave me really was that, mm. um, that bravery to go, it's okay, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that, that's, so that's quite awesome that. to hear, actually. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, I would have never done that. Yeah. Because yeah. what you find, if you go and ask someone uh, who's in an industry, I want to do the same thing as you, mm. mate, they just shut you out. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not the way you sort of acted. You're like, these are the good parts, but here's the hard parts mm. too. Mm. Yeah. Well, my thing is that we, like I always, and I still am, I'm still about our industry needing, you need good people. Mm. Um, and fuck far be it from me to tell anyone not to do what we're doing. Um, shit, if there, you know, there's lots of good people as um, you know in our industry now, and it's cool. But um, yeah, I just encourage people to get into it if they want to. Like you say, it's not it's not easy, but it's no, um, it's not easy, and it's very demanding. But it's um, there's a lot of reward in it too from a, from a satisfaction point of view. But yeah. I'm, I'm quite quite stoked actually that um, you know that that meeting that we had. I think we had a coffee down on Vincent Street there, and um, yeah, because I was just intrigued by you because you kind of I guess you reminded me of when we were getting into it because you were pretty young back then mm. and um we still are <laughs> but um uh but yeah it was one of those moments where I'm like fuck I, I can see a bit bit here of how we were at the time and if someone had said to me you know oh, get get lost I'd, you'd be pretty despondent but I was like no nah, man give it a crack or you know or just or just take some time to think about it but I'm glad you ended up doing your own thing and so yeah. Getting into the ILD thing, I didn't actually realise that it's not just in the name. Like it is a multinational like concept, eh? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think that it started probably twenty years ago in Germany. It's their technology, and then with um, a businessman uh, from Canada, he sort of went, "We all need this," mm. uh, and then so he sort of franchised it and supported those businesses within those countries to yeah. um, be able to provide that service. Yeah, and I think that it's also about how do you integrate into a building industry that hasn't ever thought they need you before mm. that part's mm. the hard part well bloody buildings always leak yeah it's that's just, right it, you can't always find the leak some of them are pretty obvious but it's yeah. the it's, I guess it's the, the real difficult ones that you guys get involved with eh? I think it's just also um, just because water's coming out of a place doesn't mean that that may be one source mm. like what we've learned more than anything is when you finally find what you think is the answer it's so easy to be really um, stoked about it and stop looking mm. uh, but from our experience it's it's got to be all ruled out and that's where being able to QA everything mm. has been such a sort of uh, a gift to the industry that maybe isn't fully realised right now but it will in time once it becomes part of the process the way we do things because we are already doing a form of what we do so council regulations product specifications the envelope engineers so the facade engineers they are all asking for some form of sign off so and these sign offs are based on ASTM standards so world standards there's a standard for flood testing and there's a standard for electronic testing of membranes and we are one of the multiple methods electrically that can be done mm. once people see that we're just following another process to get the best result for the membrane then I think it'll be used as a not a weapon but a mm. 
Well, it is a tool. Yeah, a tool, yeah, a tool. To, to complete the job correctly. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it, it's. I, I was always interested in the concept because I, I just found it fascinating that you could, you know, use electricity to, to track down a leak. Mm. And so, from from that point of view, like, what's the what's the basics? Like, how do you normally explain? What's your elevator pitch to someone? How do you explain? You know, how it all works and stuff. Uh, elevator pitch is uh, that the membrane is a bath, mm. um, and we are putting a we are wetting the inside of the bath and putting an electrical current through that water that's on top of the bath. If there's no hole in the bath, the electricity can't escape. Mm. So we're putting the electricity in that water that's on the top surface of the bath. If there's no problem with that, the electricity can't get past the bath. But mm. as soon as there's a hole, the electricity starts moving to earth mm. and it starts having a direction of current. Without that hole, the electricity just it goes nowhere. Mm. So we know really quickly, hey, this this seems really good. Uh, and then if we're getting a lot of movement, we know, okay, we've got breaches in this area. Mm. Yeah. And so you, you, you say so you, you flood the, let's just, we'll call it the bath, and you... you oh, I think the, uh, this way probably, the best way to think of it probably is a, just like a typical balcony that yep. we have, and there's thousands of them in Auckland. Mm. We would go, um, after the waterproof has completed the work, and we want to be doing it after all the other services have been completed. So the balustrades are in, the aluminium joinery's in, the cladding's in, the suffete's in, the lights are all in. But right before they put that finishing deck on, or those floating tiles mm. will come along, the deck will be hopefully clean, and then we wet that surface on the balcony, and then we'll put a wire around that wet surface, and then we start pulsing a current through that water. And that's when we start to just go and sort of go around and we... It's like mowing the lawn. We go mm. over the whole membrane, seeing where the electricity is going, and we're able to highlight those spots that are losing current. That's where the breaches are. That's a hole. We isolate that, so the electricity is not able to get to that point anymore, and then we start again. And not until it goes quiet mm. do we know that we've got every single breach in that membrane. And if they get repaired that day or the next day, then the guy who comes and lays the deck, we have taken away all the damage. And because there's only been a couple of days between the test and repairs happening and the deck going on top of it, we've mitigated all the risk. Mm -hmm. We don't find a lot of workmanship faults. Like the waterproofers are really good. Mm -hmm. Like these guys, they do it day in, day out. It's not an easy job. You wouldn't be doing this job if you wanted an easy job. Um, and we don't find a lot of workmanship faults. What we find is construction phase damage so oh. the so water like in the slab itself no no, no. That from everybody working on it afterwards right. so really main contractors should be the sign off mm. of they should do a condition sign off at the end of the project to say yeah the membranes we checked them all we washed them we tested them and repaired them and even say how many days or how much time went where they were unprotected or uncovered by deck or tiles right. so that we know we've mitigated the risk of how much damage could happen because we're seeing at the moment um, amazing apartments in our city mm. and but we are going back two years there's leaks there mm. one of the apartments was upwards of ten million dollars we pulled back a third of her deck to find 28 slices in the membrane and the main contractors are like, oh, we flood tested it. But they flood tested it the day the waterproofing was finished. So the waterproof was able to walk away. And that's fine. He should be able to. He's done a good job. But then all the other tradies come in and walk over it and drop stuff on it. And Yep, exactly yeah. that. They come uh, and do their work. They also, there's a lack of awareness of what they're actually working on. Um, and they're like, oh, and even, when, even when it's protected. Mm. Like stuff screws fall, they go underneath that mm. and gets damaged. Um, even when the tilers are putting things down they damage it mm. but it's not the first person we call with the leak is we call the waterproofer or they call us and realistically it wasn't them who mm. caused the problem it's everybody afterwards during that construction process yeah yeah yeah. it's fascinating that and is it is it as simple as just going oh let's change the order of how the subbies and the tradies come in or you, sometimes you can't help it eh? you just can't help what order they come in because of availability or weather or whatever is it that simple or not? Uh, I think it can be. Yeah, mm. I think the answer is simple. The, sim the simple answer to this is um, let, let what's happened going to happen. Mm. 
um, you could have toolbox talks or within the toolbox talks go, hey look we've got actually got membranes present now on site you guys are going to be working on on top of it for the next 6 to 12 months we've protected it with old carpet that we've picked up from carpet once rubbish bin or mm. whoever yeah. like they have those relationships but the the simple answer to this is let it all happen and then right at the end let's do that test let's mm. clean the deck up because it is essentially like that's the sad thing about it when I was working with uh, in construction uh, as the main contractor was it's these people are buying their last some in some case their last home mm. their their dream apartment their yeah. new lifestyle um, but it's not like a new car if you've got a new car and had a scratch on it they'll probably they'll get you a new car good point it doesn't good happen good with yeah. apartments mm. like they really you just got to bear with them and you got to have a bit of patience and they're going to try their best to figure it out like um an apartment I was involved in there was a a ticking with the roof mm. you know the one yep. and um we couldn't hear that in the day yeah. but at night while they're all lying in bed this roof would tick, 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 mm-hmm. tick, 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 like yep. a diaphragm it was breathing mm. um did they fix that in here yeah i think they did yeah. it wasn't like between the between the apartments the roof wasn't actually attached the the framing wasn't attached to the intensity wall so the whole thing was breathing yeah so it was a matter of just attaching that not only allow it to do that yeah that's, but that's, that's sad, eh? Yeah, well, that's so recent too. Yeah, like everyone bangs on about the the leaky building syndrome, but there's so many other like defects and faults with building um, that sort of go unmissed. Yeah, one of the big ones now is the um, is around like um, passive fire protection. Yep, yeah, that's a massive issue. You know, and so many buildings we go into, you've got you, you look up and you see penetrations that don't have collars or you know the um, the foam stuff in them. They don't have any. Um, tickets or anything on them and that's like that's still happening now it's not like it's well it started years ago but it's still they're still being built like that it's frustrating yeah and that's what I think I'm starting to talk to the the legal side of things Mm. the guys that are putting to together the cases to rectify some of these issues or where the main contractor is walking away or Mm. not handling all of the defects that have been presented and understanding how those cases are built. And now that we have decks that are covered by a floating mm. system, tiles or uh, decking, mm. underneath there is this little time capsule yeah. of how you treated this place yeah, exactly. while you were the main contractor. Yeah. Lifting it up, the lady who lives in this apartment, she doesn't smoke, mm. but there's cigarette butts underneath there, it's dirty mm. and yeah. Um, where did all that come from yeah mm. that was construction and it shows that because if it's if that flood even if I don't mind what method is to, done now to do the QA mm. because if that happens then even if it was flood testing at least it would be clean mm. you know like yeah. opening up those tiles and the owner standing right there you, you're like going oh, I feel bad you know yeah. and they stay because of that if, even if it was just clean uh, when I was a plumber one of the guys that looked after me, one of the best things he said was, the last thing you leave is the first thing they see. Hmm. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I remember that, that very same building, which we won't name. Um, we recommended to the developer, hey, we should get your bloody drains um, camera before you settle the building and yes. open the building up. Like, oh, no, we've checked them. It's fine. <laughs> they have a look down each drain. And then literally within days of that place opening, there was shit coming up through the, the ground floor. Yeah. yeah there was, and it was like, holy fuck. And they camera them, and the drains are just full of construction mess. You know, yep. like there's bloody grout poured down there. There's bits of timber. Bits of timber. Yeah. And you know everything that the guys just sweep into the thing at the end of the day, thinking it's just gonna disappear. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's um, that's a big problem, eh? And like they just don't take enough sort of care. And we, we recommend it to all developers and, and, and new buildings that we go into get the drains, all of the drains camera, just so you yeah. you know. Man, that's actually them. a good a good thing to do because. Mm sometimes that those problems from that might not rear their head in that mm. first 12 months because mm. how long is that period you know more than me how long is that defect period where you can go to them easily and they'll rectify is it's it usually 12? 12 months but in some cases like for say apartment defects it's like um it might only be 90 days from your settlement date um but for the building like that that defect liability period is usually 12 months mm. Yeah, I think that's really harsh. Like mm. when it comes to say something like a, a leak or something like that, you may have a really good winter and you don't actually experience mm. uh, directionally what you might get. And then a couple of years later, you do get that, mm. and the apartment above you is leaking on you. Yeah, 
And then, well, who do you go back to then? And they'll say, oh, it wasn't our problem, it's out of that time frame. It's out of that time frame, when really the Consumers Act is, you've got, something should last 15 years. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, so just going back a bit, like how did you, where did the opportunity come from for you to get involved with ILD? Like how did you hear about it and go, shit, that, that sounds like it's for me. Where did that all start? Uh, there was, uh, through Fletcher's, there was a design manager there mm. um, who was good friends with um, Sansom and he knew that I was leaving mm. and they had this business that was the leak detection business it wasn't bringing in much revenue but it was a huge time it took a lot it took a lot of their time mm. so um, he introduced me to them mm. and they said look there is an opportunity here but like it's it's you've got to try and work at it mm. you've got to try and work out where you fit um, so I went started working with them and straight away I was just sort of I didn't know any different so I attacked the waterproofers and I said are you testing mm. are you doing these things and that's sort of like who the fuck are you yeah fuck off <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, of course we test it yeah but yeah. They, and, and they weren't but it, yeah. now that I look back I'm like well it didn't actually matter that they weren't the problem the whole time is, is still that construction phase mm. is that damage mm. they're doing a good job and no wonder they kicked off because they know they know themselves they do a really good job mm. uh, where we see waterproofing fail this is the tricky details like construction joints and where they've um, joining big structures mm. together in those sort of areas but so I just started with them in the wrong area but slowly you find where you're supposed to go and started talking to the membrane association and um, that's there's, a, there's a membrane association there is a waterproofing membrane association and that is uh, I think that's all the different brands mm. of products they have tried to streamline and make because it's so easy for the waterproofer to always get the blame, the blame yeah. they are yeah. trying to protect their industry because mm. they also know these guys are actually doing a really good job because the, they're making their money they're selling the well they're putting the product down mm. and they're a direct representative of that brand and so they had to go look we want everything sort of done this way so there's a membrane code of practice there's an underground tanking code of practice which is in the uh, yeah, it's there, yeah. and they and they and they are trying to get recognised on some aspects on some of their code of practice. They're already recognised as an acceptable solution to the building code, and mm. it is needed. Um, so it's, it's going to see those sort of people, yeah. and then it took years to realise because really attacking the saying to the the distributors of the products, the product suppliers mm. you need to change your specification you need to enforce this but it's not them either mm. so realizing that was a not so much of a dead end because lots of them they want the right thing to happen they can see that they yep. also want to protect the waterproofers protect themselves um yeah mm. it's so many so many products are not um not used correctly yeah you know like um paint is one you know you get the the resin or whoever makes the paint and it's bloody specified this and then the applicators get in there and they might water it down a bit or they don't put, apply it yep. properly and you know then everyone goes oh the paint's shit and it's like well it's not shit the the people that put it on didn't apply it according to the specification yeah that's right yeah another good example of that in the plumbing industry is that you know that green fusiotherm pipe yeah they yep. got a hard time for a long time and it's like oh that fucking green pipe again and there's the problem and they, they they did all this all these case studies on it, and it, it turns out it's not the pipe problem. It was the people installing it. Like they were installing it, using it in, in situations where it wasn't um, like it shouldn't be used for hot water. And we had people yep. using it for hot water, and you know they weren't doing the joins properly, and you know and that comes down to um, that applicator. Yeah, the applicator. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's all. Good. The products are like these products for them to get to us in New Zealand. Mm. Like this is not a trial. Like these, this is hard fought to get to that position so mm. it must be good to stand up to those things yes some things go through a trial and error process there I there was one building in Auckland where waterproofing was put on the building and it was brands approved for external use it went on this building within a few years like they had leaky issues and it was withdrawn from brands to mm -hmm. this should not be used externally mm. If you're the one who lives in that apartment, you're you're gutted. You'd be spewing. Yeah. yeah. And only now is that being remedied. That's that building's probably fifteen years old. 
Well, ev everyone in that bloody chain should be gutted because, I mean, you know, you buy the apartment thinking that it's been built properly. Yep. The guys that build it get all the products thinking that they're specified fit for purpose. Yep. And then it goes all the way back to the people that either manufactured it or told a bit of a porky to, to brands about how, you know, how it was how it was tested. Or well, that, maybe those salespeople don't even know the technical mm. background of it. But mm. they, in the, we were there. The body corporate doesn't want to let everybody know that it's a leaky building. So there was broken families in there that mm. weren't, they want to leave. Mm. They want to sell up, try and go their own way. But the body corporate's going, no, no, you need to stay here, otherwise you're not going to get the value of what it's really worth. Mm. That's that's crazy, eh? It's like bloody dominoes, eh? Like there's this whole effect of, of people that are, you know, that, that end up bloody carrying the can. Um, yeah. And ultimately it ends up being the end user who's the purchaser and they have to pay to get the thing fixed further down the track. That's the that's the part we see which is really hard. Like when we end up testing for a place and we're finding mechanical damage you're like wow this was whether it was tested or not it was seen as a tick box exercise but really if it was done at the right time mm. um this mm. wouldn't be here these people wouldn't have these real basic issues yeah yeah Fucking, like you say they are basic issues eh? like it is that that whole process of um you know once the membrane's gone down it's all that's protecting it you know it's not yeah. it shouldn't be hard no um, it shouldn't be hard yeah. and it's like nobody's immune nobody um is immune from this. It's yeah. not like uh, it's the the balustrade guys or the, these guys are rougher than other trades. Mm -hmm. Like the the director of the construction company turns up in his R M Williams boots and he's got a sharp stone on it yeah. and he goes out to look at his big development. <laughs> he did it too. Mm. Nobody's like uh, immune from this. Yeah, exactly. This is just a just a a process that needs to happen or just that that awareness around it. Because um, so are you guys quite happy to sort of be in that that part of the um, of the process where you test afterwards, or do you want to see it change? Because essentially you might put yourself out of business a little bit. You know, you almost want to have to go in and do that test prior to settlement or whatever, or prior to the deck going on. Yeah. You know, but do you want to see that change that much, or do you just want to see a bit more care taken? Oh, they're asking for it. Like the, mm. the, the, the everybody's so busy mm. it, that yeah we can raise the awareness and people can be more careful but things are going to get this the normal thing um we think that yes it will do us out of some business because people will continue to use flood testing mm. but if they are doing a flood test at the end and they're cleaning it and they do a flood test on concrete balconies and they go hey look that didn't leak after 24 hours and then go up and have a look and they're like well there's actually a few cuts in here mm -hmm. it's not going to get through that concrete um, but at least the process got taken because mm. that might raise, that might catch a few of them at least. But yeah, we can fit in that space. The difference between us and the flood testing method is that a deck we can probably we can test each deck with about 20, 25 minutes, right? And we'll find everything on it. Whereas a flood test, you're filling it up for mm. twenty four hours and you're waiting for a leak down below. That leak down below doesn't even tell you where it's coming from either. Mm. That's the problem with that process. Well, that's the problem with any leak, eh? Like you yeah. might have a, it might be showing in one part of the building, but it could be coming from ten meters away, twenty yeah. meters away, just tracking down a bloody beam or something. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. oh, we've seen some crazy things. We saw one that was at a school in Auckland, really high profile school, that had the leak there for since the building had opened, so it was ten years. Mm. Um, the leak was. I think a floor up and along a set of um, die core panels and what it was was a jib screw through a, like a staff toilet oh. uh, hand basin so if no one used that toilet yeah. the leak never happened yeah. but it had to happen fill up the die core with die cores have a camber in them so yeah. it'd fill up like a beach and then tip over the beach and then go along and down mm. but it and only happened when someone used it only toilet. happened if that was system. used enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but because it wasn't the girls' toilets, what got used every day, mm. it was random. Oh, that's yeah. Trying to the investigation side must be quite fascinating, eh? Like yeah, niggly. Yeah. Like they always have some real battles, but mm. there hasn't been too many that we haven't been able to mm. find. Like they're pretty. It's pretty cool when you find them. Yeah, there's a lot of time wasted, and there's not a lot of chargeable time sometimes with the finding. Mm. That's why. Um, yeah, that's a different side of the business. Like, we can rule out the membrane. We can go, yeah, the membrane's good, or here's these issues, fix those, see if you still have it. Mm. Um, and then just through us doing it so much and that plumbing experience, you can go, oh, give this a try, we think, from what we're looking at, that 
it's a long hair or mm. yeah and we you, you get better at it just through being more and more open minded because I've seen yeah. water do some Crazy pretty thing. fucked up things eh? it's like flying uphill yeah yeah <laughs> if you put two pieces of glass together yeah. in a bucket it'll climb all the way out of the water out the, of the like, yeah. capillary action, capillary yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it capillarization the um the actual concept itself of the of the um what do you guys call it electric um, electric field vector mapping EFVM that's the one, EFVM. Who, did, who developed that? Like, where the hell did that come from? I, I, I believe it's... around in the bath with a toaster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's the other thing. People yeah. get up there wondering what you're doing up yeah. there. Because it does look like we're skiing mm. on your deck. Um, but I think it's a German process. I think that what came from... Um, there's another process which is where they test welding um, called holiday testing, and that's putting current through... Uh, welds to I think it sees the consistency of them or oh, test yeah. the stop start to make mm. sure that the weld continued uh, as it should yeah. and then realising that that could be used to test membrane they must have had an issue over there or mm. um, something some really clever fellas put that together mm. but then there was always this the stop of okay that's good for Concrete, uh, concrete covered by membrane because we see that as conductive. We call it conductive. Everyone's going to say no, it's not, but we are finding a potential difference. It's conductive enough yep. for us to find it. So people go, well, what about plywood? And someone sitting in an office in Auckland was looking at one of those safety windows. You know, the safety windows that have the wire oh, in yeah. the window. Yeah. And he no, was like, why yeah. don't we put a stainless steel mesh below the membrane on the plywood, and that'll be our conductive substrate on the plywood areas and that's how we realised we could test um, and cool. then ILD worldwide adopted yeah. that and so how many how many different like, franchises are there around around the globe I think there's at least 15 Shit, okay. yeah, 15, 20 but they cover a lot of range just like we cover all of New Zealand yeah. like they're covering big so you might like, have to cover half of Australia or you got a, or a big city or something yeah like we'll that. go and help out in Australia yeah um, yeah, so if there was anything in the islands, we'd go to the islands. Mm. Yeah. And how many how many guys have you got on the team, guys and girls? There's six six now. Um, yeah. yeah, most of them out on the out in the field, mm. and yeah, it's just trying to find that balance. And because it's something that, if regulatory made it more of a thing that was used, or more a greater understanding of what it is. Mm. Every, I think a lot of people know it's there, but it's really knowing. How it's to, how it's used. A lot mm. of people think that it finds where the water is mm. under the membrane. It doesn't. It finds where the hole is. Right. That's where the electrical loss is at the hole. Mm. Um, okay. So if we can describe that. So you, you you've got your area. You you put the water down, um, and then so you guys are hooked up with you got a couple of probes. Yep. A couple of probes connected to an amp meter, and that amp meter is telling us right or left. Um, and so you, you said before you're just you're making your way like mowing the lawn you kind of pop yeah that way you're touching along yeah. and they can see where the current is strongest to each side so mm. they can then triangulate where all of a sudden will change over and then they will go to the other hand and they can pretty much then all of a sudden both their by process or that triangulation method their both prongs will end up on the breach hmm. then they'll look down it's there is there is there a limit to what size hole you can find Oh, we find stuff that's like the width of your hair. Holy like, shit. Yeah. Not in my case. You'll put it. Yeah. <laughs> <Maybe> <laughs> yeah you'll, your you'll push it and yeah. it's uh, like a bubble will come out. You can't oh, see yeah. anything there. Like there's some small things. Like we had a oh, facade shit. engineer say to us, some of the stuff you find is too small. I was like, that's it's a weird a thing to say, man. What does it matter? Yeah. Like the other thing is we don't find big or small. It's just yes or no. Yeah, true. Which is really good. Like, and it's not our opinion. It's, yeah. it's the technology. Just someone knows how to drive it. Yeah. That's what makes it really unbiased. Like it's not uh, even a building inspection. You know, that's subjective to that guy's knowledge, mm. his skills, his experience. Whereas this is really the experience of the tester. He will be able to find every defect in your in your deck in a mm. very quick time. Like flood test, yeah, that might find yes, it's leaking. But yeah. is it leaking? Can you find all those five places that's leaking mm. before we have to do another flood test? Yeah. And so once you've found the the we'll call it a hole or the yep. tear or whatever. You, yeah, we call you, it a breach. A breach, sorry. Yeah. We'll, we'll go over the breach. Um, we, what do you do then? Do you have to mark it? And then you just keep, you keep going until you finish the whole area? Yeah, so we'll mark them all up. We yeah. number them, and then we put them on a map for that deck or for that roof. 
and then that's all within a report yep. it's showing so we created an app um, that the rest of the franchises most of them use now where as soon as we find a breach straight away next to it comes up a silhouette of a camera waiting for a repair photo and then not until those all those silhouettes of the cameras are gone have all the repairs been done for the related holes it's really right. easy for so until that happens no one should be putting the deck down mm. until we've got all those signed off but it's really easy it's easier than your ticked box process for the council mm. and it's handled by somebody else yeah yeah it's, it seems like a very accountable process you know? yeah it's, um, it, so when you so once you've identified the the, the breach getting my terminology right <laughs> you've got um so how do you repair it do you have to cut a bloody hole out or do you just put a bit of oh we don't even or, repair it because we're not what, yeah i think well depending on the product uh they'll repair it it's always as per manufacturer specifications mm. um and they'll come along and they'll clean it up and repair it properly and then and we can test again if they want but these guys are really good at their job if mm. they can't fix that one thing mm. uh, then that would be a problem but that enables them to move on and the diff- and the other thing is what's good for the waterproofer and they could put that in their quotes is that for any patches that aren't workmanship mm. this is the cost per patch right because we can tell the difference like if it's a lap or a termination something to do with workmanship they're going to fix that regardless mm. Mm. for free as they should but all the patches that are caused by others that's not their fault mm. that that happened yeah yeah, they just got to come back and fix it. Yeah, and so once you've you've done the test, the repairs have been made. You see, you, you can also come back in and do a retest just to make sure that the repairs are spot yep. on. Yeah. Say yeah. if there was, say if we what we do find uh, decks all the time. One recently was like there was like 30, 40 even we've seen decks with fifty holes in it. Yeah. Now these are some of these are big decks, but yeah. that's a lot of penetrations in a membrane that's supposed to be watertight. Mm. The electricity is going everywhere. We'll say in that case, hey, let us come back and just skim over it to make sure we got everything too. Mm. Yeah. Do you ever is, have you ever not found a hole, or is that that, that um, sort of process is so accurate that you just get is a hundred percent? We've had a problem in Wellington mm. actually. There was this huge planter box and oh, bloody planter box. Planter box, yeah. It was because of the two layer yeah. system, once the pressure of the water got enough, it would go through the first layer and was able to get in through the first layer somewhere else, but it had to be, we would have been able to find it if we did the flood, dropped it and tested it right away. But because they do the flood for us, yes, it's leaking. And only through that, just keep going back, keep Mm. going back. You're like, okay, this is only happening when it gets to here. But yeah, where there's been ones where we've taken a long time to find or a process of elimination type thing. Yeah, help them out. This really we get we never really leave until it's until mm. it's gone. It's mm. too hard. My brother, um yeah, he'll keep going back. And even I say to him, I say like, this is not you can only help so much. Mm. But yeah, he just was always see it out. Yeah. Yeah. And you're saying like with the um so with all the different uh, you know ILD franchises around the world some countries must be busier than others because I guess some don't get as much rainfall. And is yep. it necessarily all about rainfall, or is it? Do you guys do other other things with water? Uh, we, in regards, like there's a um, Dubai division. Mm. I don't know how much rain they see, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> there's so much money being spent that they just want it perfect. Yeah. And it is the easiest way to do. We've been doing a lot with cool stores recently, so. Um, areas a good example of the type of building that these are like these meatworks places they look they've got a minus 20 degrees inside mm. so that membrane on top that's got to be perfect because say if the pressure ever inside dropped and um, that would allow moisture say if it was getting in through the membrane that would allow that to sort of get to an area where it could freeze and then that would draw more moisture and then all of a sudden this roof gets really heavy and these roofs are like Eight thousand, yeah, fifteen thousand, mm-hmm. and then this roof that's made of these kingspan panels could get heavier and heavier. Mm. Um, I know that they're positive pressure most of the time, but that's what would ha- that's I think would happen mm. uh, if the water was able to get in. So being able to QA that, uh, make sure that it is okay, is mm. just another. And I guess the facility side as well, it's a good maintenance step. The yeah. universities they want something. They've got a lot of facilities. Mm. Um, 
I think we're realizing also that it's okay to be an expert in a space. Like it's not being arrogant. Uh, people take it the wrong way though. Mm. Like they're going, hey, this is a good process you should do. And it's, hey, I know how to look after a building. It's okay. I, I find also the older generation than us, they can't let you know mm. that that's a good idea. Mm. They, like, I'd happily say, hey, sorry, I got that wrong. Yeah. That's actually a really good idea. And that doesn't cost me anything. Mm. And it doesn't cost my ego anything. Mm. But that's something that we're seeing. You come in and be different. It's way easier to shun, mm. you know, that tall poppy thing. Well, I think to some generations, like whoever's younger than them was always going to be the boy. You know, they're always yep. like, oh, it's just the boy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Anyone younger is just a piece of shit that doesn't know anything and they know everything. So, yeah. yeah. And how I think that that Taika Waititi, like there was something in the paper recently where he was a hero to all mm. for ages and now um, he's with famous wife and all mm. these things and sort of everyone's sort of had too too much so all mm, of a sudden they mm, turn on him and yeah. he's something different now it's yeah. a negative has a negative connotation and you're like what's yeah. what, what's changed give he's still this yeah, yeah give him a break yeah no, he's just entering that next stratosphere of, of fame and that because yeah well when you're that good at what you do you know yeah it was always like he always did the certain level of movie then i think after he did like you know ragnarok was like awesome then he yeah. did another one with um the most recent thought and he's going to do star wars so he's just fucking real good at what he does and kiwis just love having someone to shoot down eh? yeah, yeah it's easy eh? it sucks, it's easy man. picking look yeah. up yeah. see that plane knocked yeah it'd yeah. be good to get rid of there and yeah. look, he's he couldn't be a not he couldn't be a more humble mm. person he's still a bloody kiwi boy at the end of the day yeah. fucking give him a break um can can you test on um Vertical? Verticals, yeah, yeah. Wherever water, so water has a tension. Like yeah. it can, to area, if it's different membranes, like this here, the water would bead. It mm-hmm. wouldn't sort of have a clean film. So we would add soap to it and that breaks down that tension and then water will actually sit flat against the surface and we can just put electricity through that water. So we would have our generator wire at the bottom and that would just pulse electricity up through the water sticking to the wall. Mm. So we've tested um, CRL, there's tunnels, uh, in Wellington that we tested before they do all the backfill around it mm. yeah have you been into, into the tunnels yeah yeah been in there is that pretty cool yeah yeah that's yeah. pretty it's huge yeah. nice oh, that'd be a good contract to get wouldn't it yeah it was hard <laughs> it's some of the areas that we're testing so the train tunnels come and turn underneath that commercial bay mm. and under there you have the tunnels but around those tunnels is more structure mm. so those tunnels are within a giant uh, garage essentially oh and we were working between so those tunnels are waterproofed because that's below sea level yeah and yeah. we were in there testing and sometimes it was you can't stand up Fuck. yeah we had some pretty pretty tough fillies in there that, yeah yeah, yeah that, but you'd be like that's pretty cool being in like places like that that no one else would ever go into nah stuff. that's yeah. right yeah. really you can say you've been there done that yeah been there done that yeah weren't not not keen to go back in there <laughs> and some of the places are so small oh. yeah it's like those, those bloody kids that got stuck in that cave over in Thailand when it flooded and stuff like that, and you know how they had to... They yeah, they made a Netflix yeah. documentary about that. That was interesting, man. Oh, did you watch that? Yeah, and I felt claustrophobic sitting on my couch watching yeah. it. Yeah, it was, it was good, though. Yeah, but yeah, they could have done with a bit of leak detection around the, those caves <laughs> at some stage. Yeah. Oh, that was pretty cool. Like, with your team, so you've got, you got about six, six on the team now. Um, how do you where do you find these people from like, are they a certain type of have they been in a trade before or like yourself have they been like in, in the plumbing industry where do they come from uh, my brother is a he was a school teacher mm. um, is he younger than a you a lot of cricketers yeah, yeah. so you yes. just said hey mate get in here yeah I said look when you come back from head of OE I said come you can work here work out what you want to do or where you want to go back to teach or whatever mm. and then we just sort of worked into it and mm. he also had a business opportunity with um, civil products so manhole lids and water meter chambers and uh, electrical chambers mm. this is big things that go on the footpath and in the road yep. um, so he said look if you help me develop this I want to give you some of that and I'll buy so there was three of us that worked together and sort of went look let's we don't want to keep time sheets mm. on different this, this business is making a little bit of money and can turn over and support while this one works mm. let's all have even shares in it mm. and we'll just try and do both mm. and oh, good on you, you can't cool. make mm. sometimes it's like you can't 
give both things 100%. You're mm. like trying to make everything happen, but you're just maybe doing five things really shit. Mm. <laughs> and sometimes you've got to focus on one. And that's where slowly having more staff and just having people that we've had so many different staff mm. and then it's really about the trying to create you'll know trying to create a culture mm. a culture is almost more important than than anything people will work for money but if they're not happy yeah um you 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 can feel that the moment they walk mm. in the door you know that they that's going to be a shit day with them mm-hmm. oh tell me about it yeah it's it's that's exactly right I, I like the fact that you guys have sort of you've got a there's a little group of you that are you know operating several businesses though that's a that's a cool move, and you know, yeah. Shit, who knows where they'll go, or if they can sort of you know feed off each other and that sort of thing. Yeah, it feels scary. It mm. feels scary. Um, it is a bit of you. It is a bit of trust in the process, mm. eh? Mm. And and the other thing about being creating businesses is, is that process even right? But I'm happy to change, yep. if it's not right there mm. yeah like a lot of that stuff I was talking about before where I was really pushing on waterproofers pushing I even do it now with facade engineers like I'm calling them to go hey is this the right process you guys are the ones saying when this should be tested or how it should be tested mm. they're going oh we can only provide advice mm. to the builders well not really the council wants you to tell them how to do it yeah. otherwise you wouldn't be here we don't need another advisor mm. we've got enough of those people yeah, we've got we've got checkers checking checkers. Tell yeah, us what to do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah, we were at a sort of point. We we're probably about five years in. And I used to sit down with a mate who's got a business, and I used to say, "Do you think we're doing this right?" And he's like, "Well, you must be. And you're still bloody in business, and you you know, you know, turnovers increasing and profits yeah. are there. And so at some point, you've you you yeah, it's that little. I agree, man. Like what you just said there about that little bit of unknown where you go, "Shit, is this actually how we're supposed to be doing this business?" Yeah. And in some ways, I don't actually think there's a right or wrong answer to that. You know, it's just like, fuck, is it working? Yep. yep. Is there money coming in? Yep. People happy? Yep. If someone said to me, it's like, hey, if you're paying tax, paying tax, tax yeah. you're, yeah. you're doing something right. Yes. Yeah, no yeah. It doesn't feel good. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not much good if you're claiming your GST every month. I mean, yeah. If, you, if you're making money, you're, you're, you're paying money to the government. You know, if, if yep. you're not making money, you're uh, getting rebates and then refunds and all that sort of thing yeah we're always trying to get some of those yeah like, sometimes so handy. yeah that's right <laughs> yeah yeah oh that's cool and so i guess like um is it is a journey into a like a new concept goes like that that must have been did you even realize you were taking a like a a, a risk was it a calculated risk there was no calculation there i actually <laughs> what i <laughs> yeah. when i met you yeah i counted in my notice yeah i leased a ford ranger straight away what a dough up that was yeah. <laughs> I bought a computer yeah. and then I sat there with nothing to do on the fucking computer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I'm in business and all my mates are going to work and I'm just yeah. like fuck I've got to do something man yeah. and that's when I would have been talking to you going hey mm-hmm. and you're like it's alright because mm-hmm. it didn't feel it didn't feel right because mm-hmm. you're like I'm not doing anything and so what I did was um, something that I always owe a debt to like yourself is um, Craig Blakey, he has Marion Construction. He allowed me to go and work on his yards and pursue the things I was trying to achieve uh, or get into that building management thing, still yeah. not really knowing what I was mm-hmm. doing. And he allowed me to work on the yards and I was oiling things like um, scaffolding stuff and back prop feet and just doing this bottom of the heap mm. jobs. Mm. But the people I worked with, um, one of them was an ex-gang member, and one of them like had was now doing this after being involved in greyhounds. Like, mm. just I enjoy all those people. They've yeah. all got a story, all and story. Then you learn something off them. Mm. Um, it's working out what to keep and what not yeah. to keep. Yeah. And he allowed me to keep an income coming mm. and keep that part of it because that's the when there's no money there, that is a huge. That's a loud voice. Mm. Um, and then one day the phone rang from. Um, someone who Tony Gracie was that design manager from Fletcher's mm. um, and he said hey look these guys there's something you should come and have a look at it mm. your plumbing might fit into it um, that's pretty cool though eh? like you know it's not like you you didn't buy a business well I don't know if you did but you know you just no. kind of an opportunity oh I did buy it was already exactly. running yeah. yeah it was already running but it was maybe turning over 100k or yeah. something like that yeah. um, but you know you, you took a you took a bit of a gamble a bit yeah. of a risk and dived into something so how, how many years ago was that now that was about eight years ago yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, and did it and realized that there's something there like i think that this mm. can go somewhere it does have a place here it's not a 
at first it came across as a nice to have and COVID confirmed after looking at, we went back and looked at all the data of the reports. We went back and pulled like, what was that breach? Mm. What was that area of concern? Was that a, was that damage or was that workmanship? And we started to like work out the numbers mm. and it was a low number that was the waterproofer's fault. Yep. And an even lower number where it was the actual product's problem. It, it, to this day, I would say the product problem is nearly zero. So COVID gave you guys the opportunity to actually take a bit of bit of a breath. Yeah. Because you've probably been busy for the last bloody eight. And that years. was a panic too. Yeah. Like, yeah. What do we do? Because were you an essential service? Yes, on some things. Some things yeah. Yep. That required well, where it became critical path. It's never critical critical path to do this test, but mm. when they have jobs that are like, okay, we're not going to put the decks down until that happens, mm. then we became essential service. Mm. Um, Oh, I think it was, it might have been something to do with CRL. CRL was an essential. Yeah. That's where the testing was. Right. Um, and so, yeah, that COVID period gave you guys a chance just to have a bit of a breath and go, fuck, we're not having got as much work on. Let's, yeah, let's have a look at the data and just actually see where where the issues are coming from. So it gave you a chance to do a bit of analysis and stuff. Yeah, it was, first it was like, how do we keep these guys busy and justify, mm. we're going to try and pay as much as we can, mm. use that subsidy. Uh, but if we are going to do that let, and not just pay them the subsidy, what can we do with them? So mm. it was really to keep them busy, sort of but then started to see a pattern. Mm. This pattern came out and it sort of strengthened the resolve of everybody after COVID in regards to sales as well. Go, hey, look, this is actually, we're, we're making a big mistake in this construction industry by missing this stuff, mm. Mm. by just using this as a tick box exercise. We are making, we are missing a beat here. With that information, did you guys actually, could you compare that with the other guys around the world, the other franchises around the world? Are they, or have they done a similar exercise in finding the same sorts of things, or have they just not bothered? No. Nah. Because you guys might be leading something there. Yeah, but they, I don't think that they did that. Mm. We actually sent it out, and we broke it down into single layer membrane, maybe even the type, mm. whether it be KEE or PVC or TPO, bitumen torch on and mastic asphalt Mm -hmm. we broke the results down into that and then put it on linkedin Mm. pretty quickly like within a couple of days we had like a national like international product provider give us a cease and desist to take that down that is like because the results were we showed it was it was about 130,000 square meters of membrane we tested and we could see, and it wasn't fair, like we tested far more than the majority of torch on membranes mm, mm. that's used here. Yep. And the single layer stuff, we'd only tested a lesser portion of it, but some of the jobs were involved, with, they got trashed, mm. absolutely trashed by the main contractors. So nothing to do with the actual product, apart from it just can't handle a continuous hiding like that yeah. for for 18 months. Yeah. Um, and so the breaches per square meter were really high, like one water tightness issue per nine square meters, whereas Torchon was like around one per 45 square meters. Because mm, there's more of it. Yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah. There was a bigger sample to give a fairer, mm. a fairer um, yeah, stat. Yeah. 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 Man, man, that's interesting, eh? Like, and the, the, the fascinating thing that you guys are part of a, like, a, a, like a global... Um, business and there must be so oppo- so much opportunity there to actually you know collaborate with them and because I guess every country's ILD would be slightly different based on building methods yeah um, con- you know, construction methods like the, the laws around construction like in the weather yep yeah, yeah the regulation um, they I think they're getting better mm. I think that the head franchise they realize that they need to we've got to support these businesses um, and they're trying to get people together mm. uh, but also I think they realise that getting the heads together the owners of all the business for to have a bit of a conference and a la da and a bit of a piss up maybe mm. isn't that beneficial so what they try and do is they try and have these um, at the moment they're Zoom catch ups and sometimes the, the actual testers are involved because when we spend time with Australia's testers, they learn. To, our guys learn so much, mm. and we teach them so much, and different methods and uh, testing on different surfaces. Mm. 
in Auckland we've got a lot of direct stick tiles on balconies in those older buildings yeah. that hid all the mm. that hid all the stuff that all the trashing that went on mm. bef- when before people walked away now those floating tiles this is just sitting right there yeah yeah but now those bloody those direct fix ones they're, they're creating a massive issue as well aren't they yeah they're, they're a big problem it is coming back isn't it in some yeah. cases yeah, yeah. we yeah. have and they were sort of all built in that 90s to early, early 2000s time yep yeah we're seeing a, there's a lot of buildings that still have those where they're you know they're bloody having to rip them up and put these floating you know the, the pallet sort of the deck yep. type things with the floating tiles and stuff and you yeah, put the membrane down underneath and it's still happening a lot yeah yeah it is mm. it is yeah and that's gonna this we haven't even got to all the ones that are still there to come you know where mm. people are still complaining to their body corporate and mm. the body yeah. corporate doesn't know well they're trying to do the best but if you don't have the funds how mm. fast can you make it move yeah exactly yeah and you can only complain in so many places uh until you you've run out of options where nothing will happen yeah you come to a dead end yeah um so who do you who do you guys actually target like who do you look for um to, for to provide work i mean obviously there's people like us in building and facility management and stuff um do you, you guys have um do you sort of chase after architects or construction companies or who, who do you who do you target we like we get the pass so you guys provide us work we'll go and that fault find so that's just random that's just really if you know we're there we can help you and they generally always the same guys come mm. back and they use it that's a good tool for them but we target that new work so we look to get into within specifications so we went and worked with master spec and uh, we try we were in there as an option with mm. membrane we go and talk to the membrane suppliers and it always said look put us in there as an option don't even name ILD mm. don't even just put electrical method like we're not trying to get you to funnel work um, we go and see the the council so the regulatory side we talk to the council so many times we've been I'll have a I'll just think of idea it could be when you had a few beers or mm. and you're like I am going to go and have a go at them for that mm. and I will go and do that and I've done this for years and most of the time they're like hey I appreciate your passion mm. but there's no silver bullet here and we can't tell people what to do and then most recently we've gone we don't actually care what method but if you just specify because they're all asking for this testing they're all asking for some version of sign off if you just specify when you're going to be doing a way better thing because every time these lawyers and these buildings are going uh, to court it's very easy to go well yeah you did that but look we can see now it's, mm-hmm. it's you trashed it that, um, that, that sort of advocacy side that you that you guys are, are doing you know when you're coming across these issues and you're trying to tell people you know ways to fix them and stuff yeah. that, that's quite interesting eh? and you know like you, you're knocking on the council's door um, kind of reminded me of that there's that scene in Shawshank Redemption where he starts up a library and asks for all, all the books and stuff and oh, yeah. you know, he says you got all the books and they're like please leave us alone he's like right now I'm going to write them two letters a week you know? yeah. <laughs> instead of once you know you just got to keep knocking eh? you got to keep persistent because someone will listen at some stage someone will listen you hit the right guy like there's been a lot of changes within the council mm. um, currently who I'm talking to um, they see that I think they can see that this that is the right way to look at it because mm. it looks it looks bad that you're asking for all these things and it's not achieving we've still got the problems mm, mm. but we sp- the money's being spent anyway you're already making people spend the money on the QA side of it uh, and we have consultants that are charging big money to be part of it um, let's and they, those facade engineers, they, these, these guys have got letters after their name. These are some clever, mm. clever people. Um, but they didn't go through uni learning about membrane. Mm. They haven't tested hundreds of thousands of membrane, or square meters of membrane. Mm. So it's just getting them to listen. And I know that sometimes it's my delivery can mm. be too brash. You got to have that soften, the soften that corporate. Mm. And, and learn how to do that but like, sometimes you don't have time yeah. you're like I'm trying to talk to like 20 20 of those type of people in that week like if you're having a problem with the person that's delivering the message like I, I'm sorry mm. but this is I truly believe that there's an issue there and I'm not telling you to add something new I'm mm. just telling you to look at how it's done it's like we were saying before though you like you can you can have the best delivery and, and all the right data but if people think that you might be a bit young for what you're doing. Yeah. You know, they, they, they can discount you that way. And that's totally bullshit. When you've got a process like yours, which doesn't tell a lie, 
you know, yeah. it's, it's either yes or no like you were saying before. yeah it's not my opinion yeah yeah it's it's is, it, is there a breach or is there not a breach you know i used to go in before i actually committed to trying to, to buy some shares uh when i saw nana for some money um, <laughs> good old nana yeah yeah, yeah bless her yeah um they would say when you go oh, i want this amount of money because i was an employee mm. they go how old are you mm. and you're like well what does that matter mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, they used to say, like, with, um, I played a lot of cricket. Mm. Like, that's what I thought I wanted to do, but I was just too shit. Yeah. Um, but they'd always say, like, if you're, with cricket, like, if you're good enough, you're you're old enough, mm. you know? Mm. Oh, yeah, man. Far yeah. I played a lot of cricket too, and uh, shit, we used to play with guys that were much older than us and much younger than us. And yeah. it's their game where, fuck if doesn't matter how old you were if you yeah mentally ball. people just got it eh? Yeah, like yeah, i yeah. just heard recently that be uh because of the way that cricket is structured say in tauranga mm. like kane williamson he was playing his school team was playing against men's teams mm. and yep. so he'd scored 2500s before he even left school so <laughs> right. against men yeah that's yeah, incredible he's been against men since he was like fucking 10 yeah. years old yeah. pretty much you know yeah. that's unreal yeah that's how we, we same as with us up north we used to play against club like men's club teams yeah and it kind of was it was good for you because they they knew all the the tricks you know and you'd have uh, these yeah. guys just playing against them and yeah it's good fun yeah um so where, where do you think um technology wise is there much that can be done because i mean it's already a process that involves electricity and it's yeah it's, it's from a tech point of view it's um it's it's sound you've got the 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 live leak detection is that like is that sort of the pinnacle of technology in you guys company or industry at the moment uh that would be that's a extra that's an extra cost mm. um and it isn't taken up very often mm. but what we are developing is uh we've worked a little bit with um Telecom providers, so like your Vodafone's, mm. Sparks, and um, on IoT or Sigma, so that's your Internet of Things devices, so wireless devices, particularly for warm roofs. So at the moment, we are seeing a lot of warm roofs, which are your membrane on top, insulation, and then a vapor barrier below. Mm. That membrane, our belief is that they should always be electrically testable. You don't have to get us to test it, but mm. make sure it's testable. It's because that top layer, if that's not watertight, that's allowed water in, that for one, the insulation isn't performing as well as it should if it's wet. Mm. But because there's a vapour barrier below, Mm. that water, Mm. that water that's coming out, that's essentially a waterproof layer as well. Mm. So this is leaking, filling up with water, and not until this builds up enough water will it actually come through somewhere, and that is in nowhere near Mm. where it's getting in. Yeah. So this, you can't do it, you do a flood test on one of those roofs and it may not leak that day or if it does leak it's somewhere else. It's going to be very difficult to to fault find where that hole is to stop this huge cavity like filling up with water mm. and then becoming a thermal bridge, the complete opposite of what it's supposed to be. So our belief is that in the future these are going to be a problem mm. because if they're not perfectly watertight, they're just taking in water. Also I believe that they breathe the sun will come out, the free air that's inside the cell will expand and blow out. At night it goes cool, and so this thing is a lung. It sucks yeah. the latent air, mm. the, the air full of water, in, and that condenses and drops a little bit of water, and this process just happens every day. Mm. And then if we can't just find that, if we can go and test that and find where that hole is, we can make these warm roofs work. So in Germany, they dry these. So they'll have these. They will do a test, find the holes, but then they will run like a massive dehumidifier and run air through that cavity. So cut a hole in the membrane, cut another hole on the other side and monitor the air coming out Mm. until that air is dry and then seal it back over and they'll know that they've got that warm roof, that sort of a remediation. Mm. That hasn't happened here yet, but with the live leak detection stuff, if we can have that remote device and we'll be able to retrofit it so into, into warm roofs that don't have electronic testable testability mm. put the device in there and that will give us information about that roof the relative humidity level the temperature a wet or dry sensor and then we can sort of start to monitor how these roofs are performing mm. and then see changes because you might need multiple per roof 
this one's performing different oh I think we've got a leak here you know and s- learn to set the boundaries it's a bit of an experiment mm. but with the knowledge that's out there with building survey, uh, building facade engineers and those those guys want to do tests you know they want to build these apparatuses and we'll put our we'll put our sensors in there and yeah. see yeah. see how like what the limits should be but there is yeah that's the way I think it's got to go for room. if we're going to keep building like that mm. like you a warm roof if you can't test it that would be like having a car you can't get a warrant of fitness on yeah exactly like if you can't check it's water tightness yeah. like that's just that's a bullshit product mm, mm, mm. like where's the responsibility lay like a little bit should lay with the suppliers to go yes that is we should be able to to check it to give it a warrant of fitness but that doesn't seem there's a, like we see a lot of buildings in New Zealand that just in disarray you know you must pick up contracts where, like, how did this get to this point? Oh, absolutely. And usually every time, the answer is always about the people involved. Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's it's one thing for a product to fail, but it's another thing for a, for a, the human element to fail. And, you know, you get a lot of um, people that would just bury the, rather bury the head in the sand than, yep. than acknowledge they have a significant problem on their hands. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's, that's difficult to deal with because people get emotional about it, especially when it's their homes. Yeah, officers not so much. There's less emotional attachment to them, but when you're dealing with someone in their home, fucking hell, like trying to convince them that they've got a problem that might cost them a million dollars to fix is not an easy thing. Not that we nah. we don't try and convince them, but we say here's the information and here's the people that you should talk to. You know, yeah, see, so we try and do the same process yeah. as you. If I can't help you, I'll steer you in the right direction. Mm. So you save that a little bit of that time because mm. you could phone beat around for hours Tough. trying yeah. to find anything near what you want. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's a tough one trying to trying to get people to accept those big problems, especially if they're at a certain stage in life where they might, you know, they might be retired, and might not have much money, or they might be young and not have much money, and yeah, it's uh, uh trying to get people to part with their money to fix these big because the, all the problems in these big buildings are bigger problems than you'd have on your house. Yeah, yeah, you they know? are. Yeah. They're like a, yeah, that's true. But it's yeah, also saying well, beast. you've also got a whole lot of other people that contribute to paying for it, so it's probably cheaper than. You know, re-roofing a building like this would be cheaper than re-roofing your house per owner. Yeah. Um, you know, because you divide it by however many. And that must be what, when you get a new apartment, and you've got to go through that process ten years into mm, the the mm. building and like the building's life, mm. that must be devastating. Mm. Because you're like, we bought a new car. Mm. Yeah. We bought a new car. That's right. Where's my new car? Do you guys do any um, like contracted work where you go in every year to a place and you test it and test the roof and then you know that you provide that sort of service? We have done that and it's where the roofs are like to say like um, where roofs have a lot of plant on them where a lot of servicing is done to air, uh, air conditioning stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the big old buildings in the city they'll have big water towers. Oh, yep. Yeah. their cooling towers mm. they have got a lot of traffic around them and in that case we'd go and we do find the odd thing but there's so much less traffic after the building is finished mm. uh, it's not often and I think the abseiling companies they're actually pretty good like we test a lot of buildings where they've been a lot mm. and never really anything from them mm. pretty yeah I think that those guys Maybe because they are literally, as they're climbing over the edge of the building and they're on your, they're, they, you are pretty switched on at mm. that point. Yeah, yeah, it would feel pretty. Yeah, oh, look, we've talked to a few ab sailors on on this podcast already, and mate, the, the the rigmarole they have to go through even before they leave the, the the roof of the building, you know, as they're going over the edge, all that health and safety check, all the, you know, the care of that area that they work in, being the roof mainly. Yep. Um, yeah, it's all pretty uh, full on. It's pretty. And trust in something that yeah. you are responsible for. That, mm. that must be mm. hard. But, yeah, back to what you're saying is we don't, unless there's been a lot of traffic mm. and, it, and they have a leak, we don't really go back. And mm. I think as much as we could go and pursue that and go back over all the old reports and go every time something gets to 10 years old, let's go back and see if we could do that. Mm. That's probably something that we should do. And But, we also don't have those buildings coming back saying, hey, we've got a leak. Well, they don't know if they've got a leak, though. That's true. <laughs> I'd be yeah. going down the track of, because uh, that could be quite a good, you know, regular income for you guys, is that yeah. you actually say to people, look, we'll come and test your roof every year. 
might cost you X amount, but at least you know. Because like you said, a lot of those leaks you can't actually see the the, the breach. Yeah. So that, yeah, that is yeah, that's mm. true. And that's probably something that we we have looked at but not hard enough. And I think that what that comes down to is really going, Hey, let's we're not gonna get the job today. Mm. Here's a quote. We know what your roof is, we've been here before. Mm we should have got everything the first time in regards to the construction phase damage so we're normally not going to find that much so it's going to be an easier test mm. and just put that in your file for next year's like capex yeah that's yeah. probably the way yeah i'll write that down <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, i'm not telling you how to bloody no 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 that's all nah, happy you know, with from that. a, that's from that point of view you know it's like it's another revenue stream and it's it's showing that you're you know you're going back to your customer and because yeah, when you said we don't go back to the customer i'm like shit they're the easiest one to go back to. Yeah, because yeah. You've, it's the testament to it almost, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to, I think we need to work a bit closer with the universities and go, uh, yes, they've only got a problem here. Mm. But hey, look, can we look at everything you have? Um, an idea we want to do with the, the retirement home industry, their construction, is go, hey, can, instead of us pricing you job by job or deck by deck, can, you tell us how much membrane will allow us to measure your jobs that you're going to do this year. Mm. And if that's 15,000 square metres, can we price on 15,000? Yeah, you just have a flat rate. Mm. And this is your in-house risk mitigation of all your horizontal surfaces. Mm -hmm. And I think that's worth a try mm. um, just to see. Especially they're the biggest. Yeah, well, that's the beauty, though, about having your own business, right? Give it well, a go. You can give it a crack. Yeah. If it doesn't work, too bad. If it does, cha-ching. That's the fun, yeah. Sometimes yeah. you're going down a path and passion or... Mm. Uh, emotion gets you you almost hunt like say if you're going to the council you're almost hunting that guy mm. you almost want to make him see that but you get caught off and then you'll catch yourself you're like man I'm way off track here <laughs> <laughs> but, but you learn you did learn something while you're there yeah, or yeah yeah, yeah 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 no it's cool man I think it, like it's a bloody great service and like it's, it's been awesome to see you you know get into it and, and grow that business and you know start to grow that awareness around what you're doing um, you know, we certainly we've supported it well in the past, and yeah, need to get you back in to have a chat with the <clears throat> with the team again, and just you know keep in front of the, the newer people on the team. But um, yeah, good on you for bloody taking the leap and uh, you know and, and doing what you're doing. Oh, thanks um, for the mate. It's good to see and the um, push. Yeah, if we we'll promote it where we can. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, just keep up the good work, mate. I appreciate you coming in to give us a bit of an insight into your industry because it's quite unique. Um, you know, it's it's not something that a lot of people do. Um, yeah, and it's not so easy to explain either. Like mm. it does, and it does look weird too. Mm. Um, yeah. And yeah, but one of the number one things that people don't like in their home or their apartment or their building is a leak. Yeah, you know, and, and sometimes these leaks are very obvious, and sometimes they're not. And you know, that's where that's where you guys come in and do the you know the it's detection. It's almost like being a bloody detective. You know, yeah. it's it's trying to find where these things are. Using oh, that's one of our staff on this email. It's yeah. Leak detector. Leak detect uh, leak detective. Detective. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's he, cool. He Makes a lot of sense. Right. And uh, I, I worked with a guy with, for one of, he was a main contractor. He'd been in the same company for 50 years, and he said, look, of all the buildings that I built, I never built one that didn't have a leak in it. Mm. Mm. It was just part and part of, part of the process. Mm. Same as that construction phase damage. Like, this is actually happening every day. Um, it's what process we put in to make sure that we can mitigate and drawing a line and sand and going, yep, okay, we've got all those, we mm. can move on. Mm. Nah, it's good, man. Keep up the good work, and um, yeah, we'll, hopefully, we'll still catch up every year or in between, but at the old rugby foundation, yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Dues as well. I yeah, mean, nah. support those pretty pretty regularly. Oh man, that's, that's a yeah. really good cause, good eh? Cause, eh? Yeah. yeah, thanks, man. Hey, thank you, brother. Cheers, Appreciate that. Good on, bro. Mm.